You're listening to Catalyst Talks, conversations with change agents, outliers, superheroes, and truly conscious leaders modeling what it is to be an unstoppable force for good and truth in this world. What lit these catalysts on fire to do their work and what nuggets of wisdom can they share with a world literally on fire? I'm your host, Stephanie Traeger. I'm a transformational catalyst, life coach, and maverick change agents in business, leadership, and life. On this podcast, I wear an eclectic mix of hats, including earthkeeper, wayfinder, truth teller, coach, lawyer, business, and impact strategist. My intention is holding space for higher purpose, peak wellness, soul mastery, and deeper impact so we can live in harmony with ourselves, each other, and nature. Please subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. If you love it, please share and spread the word. We're on YouTube and all the podcast platforms. See the show notes on CatalystTalks.com for links and enjoy this episode. Hello, everybody. It is me, Stephanie. And today we have a solo cast here on Catalyst Talks podcast. I am so excited to be sharing with you the inner work of impact. This is a body of work. It is a modality, a process that I've been pulling together for many, many years. And it's pulling together sort of two, two sides of the work that I do. And I am sharing this with the intention that you get to walk away and have something come from this that you can plug into your life or your experience right now that helps you on some level. That's the goal. I know that every time I put something out in the world new, I am forced to go through it. I am forced to humbly walk the path myself. And so everything I share here today is an offering for you, but also please know that it's a humbling sharing of my own personal experience as well. And the way this work came together was, you know, for many years, I've been a coach and a transformational catalyst doing deep inner work with myself, with people and watching massive transformations happen so that people could either just love their life, feel aligned and on purpose or thrive and flourish in their business and really, really create an aligned and impactful life. And on the other hand, I've been an activist. I've been in the sustainability and impact space before that's, these were even things, you know, I was an environmentalist and then sustainability became a thing. And now it's called impact. There's this impact space and that we're talking about everything from finance to company, to corporate responsibility, to, uh, you know, just wanting to save the world, whatever that means. And that's a big one, but I wanted to share this with everybody right now because the merging of the inner work of impact, really what it is, is merging these worlds of sustainability and transformation or, you know, impact and transformation or inner, inner transformation. So I've spent so much time in the space thinking about, hmm, I see everyone wanting to do good. And there's this opportunity for us to just raise the consciousness a notch or 20. Like really there's a disconnect going on. You know, there's, there's, this surface level, there's a lot of greenwashing. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of amazing things happening in the world and in business it, with impact and sustainability. It's amazing. And then there's a lot of like things that you look at it and you're like, wait a minute, is that actually real? You know, and it's the same idea how people have a different worldview around what's going on in the world with COVID right now. You know, some people th- say you got to do this. And some people say, no, you don't have to do this. And who's right? Maybe both sides are right. Maybe both sides are right. And it's the same thing when we look at sustainability and impact and and problem solving for big world problems. The question is, who gets to say what the solution is? Who gets to say what's right? We want to all do good. And the idea is just show up and do what you feel is good. And it's probably good. And you're probably going to have an impact. And the inner work is about the more we do our inner work, the more we start to connect the dots on our own life experience and our own personal traumas, our own stories, our own the way we're living out our own programs and systems, the more we do the inner work and we're able to connect those dots within ourselves, the more we can connect the dots outside of ourselves so that we can see that we're not going to create unintended consequences, that we're not going to impose a solution that we believe is really good but we only believe that through our limited perception and our limited worldview. And our worldview expands as we do our own inner work. So that's the goal here. And I have come to that conclusion after decades in the sustainability environmental impact space. Um, and I say space, I'm talking about finance and in investing and 
and corporate sustainability and corporate responsibility and you know lots of different industries in lots of different industries and also doing this work over here in this transformational space and i see wow you know even in leadership we're talking about conscious leadership and there's so much work being done in in both areas, right? There's this growing evolution in sustainability and there's this growing evolution in the transformational leadership space. And they're both gorgeous and stunning and beautiful. And I'm, I'm bringing in this work on the inner work of impact. So we could sort of raise the frequency a notch and say, I mean, really, really take the deepest level of responsibility, not only for our lives, for our experience, but also for the impact that we're creating in the world. And to just step back and say, well, where am I not seeing something? Where can you challenge my belief about my, the solution that I'm offering? Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not the solution. Maybe it is, but maybe it's limited by my own worldview, which is limited by the, own, the depth of inner, inner work that I've done in myself. There's always more to go. It's a lifetime journey, and that's the thing. And I humbly share this with you. I'm going I'm to bring this inside to the granular now, to, into our personal experiences. And I humbly share this with you. I have been wanting to record this podcast for like weeks right now. And I'm going through something in my own personal life that has me deep in the inner work of impact, like applying these things in my own life. And it's been humbling to say the least. And then yesterday or two days ago, I was supposed to do, record this episode and I ended up having a pretty um, interesting experience, which was that something I was moving, trying to take something off the wall. So we're working on something in my house and I, and something fell on my nose and I have a, con- I, I am experiencing the symptoms of a concussion and I'm experiencing that right now. So if my words are incoherent at all, that is why. But it was the moment where I was like, oh my God, this is exactly the thing that I was going to be talking about on this podcast. In fact, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I experienced a concussion that lasted for two and a half years in in the form of post-concussion syndrome. And I tell this story all the time when I'm talking about cognitive dissonance, because that is, the, it is for me, it is the, the, the model of what happens when we're not congruent. So the inner work of impact is a body of work. And I'm actually going to be hosting four workshops this fall. And they're the inner work of impact deep dives. And it's a series that starts in October and goes through December. And you can sign up for one, you can sign up for all. And if you are curious about this, go to www.innerworkofimpact.com. And there are four workshops. The first one is the higher purpose pivot. That's about pivoting into our highest purpose. Uh, if you, whether you're like a little bit lost off course or really just up leveling and in a pivot right now, this is a really great workshop for you. The higher purpose pivot. The second one is your story is your medicine. This is about transmuting our story and finding the hero, finding the, the gold in our story and, and actually crafting a talk. Um, whether or not you are a presenter, a keynote talk speaker or whatever, if you are great, this is so helpful for you. And if you're not, it's still really helpful because we are always telling stories about our life, whether it's outside of ourselves or to ourselves, to ourselves. And that story perpetuates. And it's the, it's the meaning making that we give to a lot of our experiences is really based on our story. So your story is your medicine is such a, can't wait for that one. And the third one is quantum leap into your destiny. And this one is really around mastering our powers of perception. That's a deep one. (laughs) And the the fourth one is visioning a powerful 2022. So this one is about really reflecting on the year and then like creating a deep and and powerful vision for 2022. And I have an awesome roadmap that we get to use for that. So if you're interested, just check out the uh, www.innerworkofimpact.com. And I'm sharing that because that's part of this modality. And underneath those workshops, for example, underneath those pieces, Underneath all of the inner work of impact or any inner work at all, anyway, is whether we're being congruent or not. And congruence, congruence means that like we say one thing, we do it. We mean one thing, we want one thing, we take action towards having that one thing. We um, we have our thoughts, words, and actions aligned. That's congruence. And the opposite of that is dissonance. It's when we're not aligned. We say we want one thing, but we do another thing. 
And the psychological term for that is actually called cognitive dissonance. This is a term that was coined by a psychologist in the 60s or 70s called Leon Festinger. And he's written several books, but it's, a, it's the concept is ancient. It's all medicine people and shamans and healers and curanderos from ages and ages ago knew that if you went there to see a, do- a healer and your life was like out of alignment in some way, that was dissonance that would be kind of where they would, they'd go there because healing and transformation require alignment. They require congruence and it's not always easy. You know, just like, just like transportation is not always easy. If you don't want to have a bad negative impact, like you don't want to use oil or you don't want to use lithium batteries or whatever else is fueling electric cars, right? Transportation it's like, oh, I got to get here. I got to fly. Well, yeah, but I don't want to harm the environment, but we fly anyway. And that's no judgment. I do it too. I'm just saying that it's not always easy, right? And so inside of ourselves, we build these really powerful protection mechanisms and coping mechanisms that are not always easy to break because they we created them often when we were very young and they serve a purpose. And so one of the things I love to do when I start working with somebody or when I'm going through something myself is just be like, where am I out of alignment? And like really look at where are we out of alignment with what we say we want and what is the, what are our thoughts, words, and actions doing that are either congruent or, or dissonant and cognitive dissonance in, in general, like just the definition of it by definition, there's about three, one, there's probably more, more ways this plays out, but the three common ways cognitive dissonance plays out are, you know, you know, something's bad for you and you, you pretend like you, you just kind of reason off all the the reasons why it's not good for you. You just kind of make excuses for that. And and you really believe that it actually is good for you, even though, you know, it's not, that's one way that's like really big disconnect. Then the next way is, you know, it's bad for you, but you, you just kind of file that away and you don't want to know. So you pretend you don't know. And then the third way is, you know, it's bad, you do it anyway, and then you feel guilty and shameful. And then you're just carrying all this energy, right? And shame and guilt are really low frequencies. They're very low vibrations. So now we're like dragging that around. And I've, I've had that before where I, you know, can beat myself up. This was when I had a head injury almost like 11 years ago. This was, a, I was living an experience that was so out of alignment that I was beating myself up because I was very aware of it. I was doing it anyway. I was staying in this job. I was living in Midtown Manhattan. I was unhappy. I was blah, 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 all these, it's a long story and it's a good story, but I'm not telling it here. Um, I've I've shared some of this story on, on my other podcasts, but the idea is just that the dissonance was there and it was alive and it was heavy. And then I ended up not listening to it and had an accident that caused a head injury, which lasted for two and a half years. And I also was experiencing something recently the other day where it was not congruent with what I was saying I wanted. And so I was very off center that day and this thing fell on my head and I, boom, experiencing the symptoms of a concussion now. So, you know, I firmly believe, oh, it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen, but it happened because of my, like my energy or what I needed to learn in that moment. And so we are always experiencing opportunities to to make those connections and learn what is this, why is this happening for me right now? And when we can do that, then we can have compassion for ourselves. Then we can go and look in and say, hmm, when was, and what is the feeling? What is the feeling underneath that's actually there? The reason why I'm being dissonant, you know, I'm, I fear change. Like, you know, you'd have to change your behavior while you fear the change. Why? What's under that? Of course, this is, it's hard to do it without like a, you know, context though. That's the the idea is that we do this deep inner inquiry. And it's like, how deep are we really willing to go to find the answers, to look at it and heal it? And it doesn't have to be 10 years in therapy. It could be a, a quantum moment where you see it, look at it, heal it, boom, heal it, fixed, you know, cured, healed, boom, gone, delete. I mean, not delete. We never want to delete. We always want to know and honor and respect, but we can move forward and we don't have to have that program in us anymore. And sometimes these are programs that were wired into our nervous system as babies or as little children, because we might've experienced serious trauma and they play out in our adult life. And traumas from childhood will often play out in our adult life. Like we 
are fixing other people or we want to save other people and be the martyr or control being controlling or attracting all kinds of weird people in our life to play out characters to prove why we believe, you know, to prove our story that, oh, you know, relationships are toxic or, um, you know, people are bad or <laughs> whatever the story that you have is, or it's unsafe to be seen or it's unsafe to speak my truth. You know, those are stories and they come from somewhere and to honor them and heal them at the core. Like, where did it come from? When did it first, when was that imprint or program first installed? By who, where, when, what? And it's not about blame. It's not about blame. It's about taking responsibility that we can heal. We can transform and transmute these things to change the pattern, the holding pattern. Um, as my, my, one of my mentors, Margo, would say, she's going to be on the podcast soon. But to transform and transmute those holding patterns that were once very useful for us and they kept us protected, they protected our heart, they protected an old wound because as kids or as children or even as young adults or adults at any age that experience trauma, you know, we have a very complex psychology that builds in and nervous system that builds in protecting, protecting mechanisms that we use to keep us safe. And if it kept us safe at one point, it doesn't mean it's keeping us safe now. Often it's holding us back from joy, from love, from experiencing the fullness of our humanity. And so the opportunity for the inner work of impact is to really go and look and start that starting point is around where is cognitive dissonance showing up in my life? Where am I dissonant in my thoughts, words, and actions, or what I say I really want and how, um, what am I attracting or calling into my experience? And though it's not an, always an easy process, but the question is, what is the cost of not doing that inner work? The next part I want to kind of call attention to in the inner work of impact is, and the reason why it's so important to go in and do this. And I don't, you know, look, if you're, if you're skilled and this is something that you know, and you're practiced that go ahead and do it. I love to work with people. I always have my own healers, my own mentors, my own guides, coaches. And then I'll often go off and kind of just do my own. It's like this ebb and flow. And I, you know, expand and then you live it and you don't have to do the healing or the inner work. It's not always about sitting in the inner work all the time, but it's knowing when it's time to go in and do it so that we can do our work in the world and step in more fully into our purpose. Now, if you're someone who's out there already impacting millions, impacting the world in a big way, like really, you know, one of the big change makers in the world, you know, this is the work of perception. For, for all of us to step back and say, where is my perception limited about what reality actually is? Because everything, the thing, the change that we're bringing to the world, the way that we're speaking, the, the energy that we're holding is always informed by our perception of reality. And we're experiencing this right now in the world with the little thing floating around that everyone's, you know, there's, there's a few different <laughs> angles that people are taking around whether you should wear a mask, whether you should get the shot, whether you should do this, whether you should do that. And people telling each other what to do and what's right. And here's the truth. And here's not the truth. There's a buttload of censorship going on. Like, whoa, right. There's so much cognitive dissonance right now on the world stage that it's a really great example. And often we have to look back in retrospect to see it unless you already see it. If you don't see it, then when we look back in a few years or a decade or so, it's going to be obvious because that's that's often when we see. We look back now or I'm bias. Bias is is big thing, right? The whole Joy, George Floyd episode that broke out this year episode, you know, he was murdered. It, it, it created this groundswell of transformation in organizations and the conversation around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And the, the conversation around bias was is just exploded this year. And yet there's this massive bias unfolding right now around people who aren't doing what other people think they should be doing. So are we connecting all the dots? That's the biggest question. Are we connecting all the dots on our impact, on what we think is right? Why what we think is right is right. All we know is what's right for us at the end of the day, and then we want to put that out and share it with the world, right? We know it's right to protect the Amazon rainforest. We know it's right to protect ancient trees. There's no question about that. I don't think anyone actually doesn't think so. Even if they're going to cut a tree, a big tree, they still know that it's important not to 
but they made the decision to do it. But it doesn't mean that they don't think that that tree, you know, has a huge value in the world. I mean, in, in the, in its ecosystem, but the question, and, and there's another great episode with Paul Rosalie, who is a conservationist and the founder of Jungle Keepers that, that you've got to listen to. He's coming on soon. So I just wanted to bring this in because there's this really big opportunity we have right now to step back and like, just check our perception, check our worldview. Perception informs our worldview and our worldview informs our the solutions we think are going to save everything, going to you know, solve the problems that we think are really big in the world. And so always stepping back and saying, let me do some inner work and clean. Where does COVID live in me? Where does COVID live in me? And I don't mean the virus. I mean, this whole big thing, where does a pandemic live in me? Where am I contributing energetically to a pandemic on the planet? Are we willing to even ask that question? Where does the Taliban live in me? Where does the violence live in me? Where does uh, cutting the forest and killing ecosystems live in me? It does. All of these things live in me until I clean them up. And that's the inner work of impact. Because the traumas, the old stories, everyone doesn't have trauma. And trauma comes in all shapes and sizes. You know, some, some could be like a gruesome, awful experience. And for some, it could have just been, I dropped something as a kid and there was like a, a disproportionate reaction that like jarred my nervous system. And my soul was like, I'm out of here, you know? And then you created some kind of protection mechanism. That's what trauma is. I mean, it's not always being under the buildings of 9-11, you know, the World Trade Center falling or being in war, or I experienced a, a severe trauma when I was a baby. Um, and that did inform my nervous system about how to operate in the world. And I'm still kind of clearing some of that. And so it's being willing to see where our reactions, our worldviews, our perceptions, where do they live in us so that we can go in and like, oh, ding, 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 clean up on aisle six, right? Um, it's, it's that being willingness to do the inner work. The question is really where in our bodies, where in our psyche, where in our emotional beingness or not beingness. Some, be some people are so disconnected from their emotions that they don't even know where this stuff lives and where do I start, you know, and, and there, there might be a physical manifestation of something and it could be, you know, a real physical ailment or a chronic issue, but often it's connected to something else because we're one being, you know, it's like the tree doesn't just get sick and die. There's something going on. There's a bug on it. And the bug is, it's, it's often a systemic issue. There's like, what's going on. It's not getting enough water, even the bug. Why can't it just kill the bug? Why can't it? The, there's a reason why the, the ecosystem is inviting the invasion or the death of this thing. And so the question in ourselves is, because we're, we're one complex being, we're not just a physical body. We're a body with an emotional body, a spiritual body, an energetic body. <laughs> if you want to go to the extent of talking about this is we have a luminous body and then we're connected to the bigger body, which is humanity. We're connected to the bigger body around us, which is our immediate community, um, the nature, the earth where we live. And these things are all factors. There, there's co-factors in our health and wellness or not, or in our dis-ease. And looking at all of these pieces is so crucial when we're healing from something like physically taking hold of us, for example. And even emotionally, if we're working on something emotionally taking hold of us, it's going in and understanding our psyche and understanding old traumas and how these old programs are playing out. There's a huge movement around systems change and changing capitalism. How many portals one must go in to understand how big is that system to map in order to actually change capitalism? There's huge systems we've got to map to figure out the whole thing. Either we blow up the whole thing and start over, or if we're going to go in and sort of do surgery and fix the system, we've got a lot of different pockets and things we've got to look at. So first we have to map it. And that's what the inner work of impact is. It's looking at ourselves as a system, mapping it, knowing the cause, the root cause of the 
behaviors that are causing cognitive dissonance, for example, or causing something that is, you know, showing up in our behavior of disempowerment, and then being willing to do whatever it takes to change that behavior. And if it's an illness showing up in our physical body, it's like, yes, approaching that from the outside in and from the inside out, just like we might approach an, uh, you know, a problem in the forest. Example, big logging plan, big, big timber harvest plan, uh, a large old ancient forest is set to be cut. You can go lobby in Washington. You can go lobby, you know, in your state to have that plant, the national, the state forest service, you know, nullify the timber harvest plan, or you can go sit in the trees and block the roads and say, no, you can't cut this forest. Or you can do the whole system together, right? You go to, and you lobby on the outside and you file for temporary restraining orders in court. And on the other side, you're stopping the logging at the moment so that that thing could happen over there so that you protect the forest over here. And it's, it's like you're doing it from both sides. And that's the idea of the inner work of impact. It's we want to have an impact outside of ourselves. We want to you know, solve a certain problem. But we have to go on the inside also and do the inner work so that we can come to that problem with a different set of eyes with a different perception of reality, because our reality is always informed by what is going on inside of us. So I want to invite you, there's, there's one thing I want to share with you before we go here. And this is around when I was talking about being like looking at the disempowered place where we're, when we're acting out from trauma or old stories or old programming that is no longer serving us, we're often in that space of either control or martyrdom or um, attracting the wrong people into our lives who to play out certain characters to prove our stories, you know, even if it's not true or not serving us anymore. There's a whole list of qualities around how cognitive dissonance shows up in our world and how traumas and old un- unhealed stories play out. And the goal is like to look at that and say, that's the the disempowered place to look and say, oh, this thing is happening to me. It's a disempowered place. And so I experienced this, this um, knock on the head, which caused symptoms of a concussion to be in my experience right now. And instead of saying this thing happened to me, I'm saying, oh, whoa, I called this into my experience for X, Y, Z purpose, or because I was out of alignment because X, Y, Z was going on. And let me look at that. Let me really take responsibility and like, look at that. What was, what was going on in that moment? And the idea of this, the triangle of disempowerment is actually, there's three roles you can be playing. That's why we call it a triangle. You can be the rescuer, you can be the victim, or you can be a perpetrator. And when we play out any of those roles, and often we're playing out more than one, but you know, one of those roles is usually predominant in our, in our experience. So when we're playing out one of those roles, it's disempowering. As a victim, it's disempowering, you know? And so stepping off of the triangle of disempowerment and into a place of empowerment, we we look and we say, you know, you have a different inquiry. You have a different set of eyes. You have a different lens with which you see the challenge that's showing up for you and you solve it in a different way. And a lot of times in this world we live, we're coming from this place of either victimhood, perpetrator, or save, you know, rescuer. You want to save the world. So how do we step off? Because that's in a disempowered place. We want to co-create. We want to co-create healing. We want to co-create transformation and beauty. And, you know, often it's not saving anything. It's just, well, stop perpetrating, stop doing the harm. And then the thing will be fine by itself. You know, often it's not being a victim. It's, oh, this is happening for me. I wonder why. Let me inquire. When we inquire that way, there's an opportunity. There's always an opportunity. When we, when we are coming from a victim place, we're not seeing the opportunity. So let there be a nugget in here for you. I really hope there's a nugget in here for you. And one of the ways um, I want to offer that is like to just do, do a journaling exercise. You know, pick something that stood out for you today. And maybe you can say, where am I living out a little bit of cognitive dissonance? Where am I dissonant? Saying I want one thing or saying um, I, I, you know, I believe one thing, but I'm doing something that's complete contrary. You know, I know this is bad for me, but I'm doing it anyway. I know this is bad for the environment, but I'm doing it anyway. Those are, that's the inner and the outer, right? Or you can also look at this and say, where am I on that triangle of disempowerment right now? And what if I stepped off? What, what is the opportunity for me? How can I see it differently? Not as a victim, not as a rescuer, and not as a perpetrator. How can I see it differently? 
And what actions can I take or not take in order to be okay and be grounded in this place and, and let that thing play out anyway without having to solve it or save it. So that comes from my heart. I want to invite you to please check out the website, innerworkofimpact.com. Use the W's first, www.innerworkofimpact.com. The link is also in the show notes here um, on catalysttalks.com. And this is the four-part uh, workshop series we're hosting in the fall. And we're going to we're gonna dive deep. These are deep dives. And I invite you to come and join me. Space is in- intimate. Uh, we're going to have a, just a few people, a handful of people. So um, space is limited and the vibe is intimate. Please come and join us. Thank you for being here today. And I look forward to hearing from you. If any of this landed, if you got a nugget, if you want to take it further and learn about working with me, reach out at stephanietrager.com. And until we meet again next time, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Catalyst Talks. Stay tuned for what's up next and please subscribe to our podcast and rate us wherever you listen. You'll find these all at catalysttalks.com. Join the conversation on social media. And if you'd like to reach out, please send me, Stephanie, a private message through stephanietraker.com. Your attention means the world to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you.